Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve serialize and deserialize a binary tree. Basically what we're trying to do is we're given a binary tree, right? And we want to write two functions for it, serializing it and then deserializing it. When we serialize, we're taking an object, right? And this object in memory, it could be anything, right? Like you don't know where this node could be in memory. You don't know where this node could be. We know that there's some links and stuff connecting them all together. But what we want to do is take this and put it into a very easy to read string that could be passed around easily, right? So basically, for example, we could convert Basically, we could convert this entire tree into a string, something like this, right? One is the root node, then there's a two, then there's a three, then there's a couple nulls because two doesn't have any children, and then there's the other nodes, four and five, right? Basically, this is something that's easy to use and pass around, right? And we also want to be able to take a string like this and then turn it back into a tree, so we have to keep that in mind. It's something that could be, you know, taken back and forth, easily reversed. So there's a lot of different ways to solve this problem. I'm going to show you a pretty easy and straightforward way to do it. You could use breadth first search, basically taking the tree and then serializing it level by level and then, you know, reading through the input level by level, etc. But there's also a way to do it with depth first search using pre-order traversal. And I'll show you this way because it requires a little bit less code. So like I mentioned, we're going to be doing this with pre-order traversal. So let's just see what would a tree like this, if we converted it into pre-order traversal into the form of a string, what would it look like? Well, obviously the first value is one. So we're going to say, okay, the root node is one, right? That's what pre-order means. We're going to do the first node. Then we're going to recursively do the left subtree with pre-order traversal. And then similarly, after that, we're going to do the right subtree in pre-order traversal. Now, obviously, we want to be able to separate values. So we're going to use a comma as a delimiter, but you could use a space if you really wanted to or use something else, but I'll just use a comma. So now let's recursively do the same thing for the left subtree. So obviously we have a two. Let's add that two because we're doing pre-order. And now let's do the left and right subtree of two. So first let's go to the left subtree. Now we're going to see null, right? This is null. It's empty. There's nothing there. But we are going to add that to our string just to indicate to us that this left portion of the subtree cannot be continued, right? And you could add the word null, but I'm just going to use a capital letter N to indicate that. So that's going to be our special value that indicates an empty no node or empty tree. Since we finished the entire left subtree and we know that it was a null, right? So that's basically our base case that tells us we can't go any farther here. So now what's our right subtree for two? It's also null. So we're going to add another null. And see how we've done the entire left subtree here? So now we can start going down the right subtree. So of course the first value is a three. So let's go ahead and add that. And similarly, we're going to do pre-order traversal on the left subtree. Now you can basically see this is the exact same thing that we did up here, right? Two was a node and two had no children. So left and right child of two were null. That's the same. That's true for this four node. So we're going to add four and then we're going to add the two null nodes, basically indicating that four does not have any children. N, N. So now let's go do the right subtree. Basically, you can probably tell what I'm going to do here. So I'm running out of space. So let's put the five down here, comma, and then a couple empty null nodes. And now we're done, right? That was the entire string. So now I'm going to get rid of this tree and we're going to see, is it even possible for us to be able to take a string like this and know exactly which one is going to be the left node and which is going to be the right, et cetera, et cetera, right? Well, we're obviously going to use pre-order traversal on this string basically to create a new tree and I'm going to show you that it is possible that this string is actually not ambiguous because clearly you can see, okay, one is going to be the root node. Then the next value must be the left. If this were a null, that would mean that one has no left subtree, right? So we could just put null for its left subtree. But clearly this is not null. So that means two is the left child of one. Next, we see, okay, let's create the subtree for two, right? Well, its left child is null, and next, its right child is also null. So therefore, two is not going to have anything, right? So that's basically the idea. So now let's actually do it. Okay, since we know we created the string with pre-order traversal, that's basically the idea we're going to use. So we're going to have a pointer, we'll call it i, that's going to basically tell us what index 
of this string that we're at. Well, in reality, what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna take this string and then split it based on the delimiter comma. So then it's actually gonna be an array, but I'm not gonna redraw that just because it's pretty straightforward what we're gonna be doing with this string. So first one is non-null, so it's a one, right? So we are gonna create a root node with the value one. Now let's create the left subtree, similar to pre-order traversal, right? We're creating the node now, then we're gonna do the left subtree, then we're gonna do the right subtree. The question you might have is, how do we know when the left subtree stops and when the right sub subtree starts? I'm gonna show you, it's actually simpler than you might think. So we know that the first value here is gonna be the left child. If this were null, we would put a null here, but it's not null, it's two, so we are creating a two node over here. And once again, recursively creating this subtree. So start with the left, so this first value is gonna be the left subtree. It's a null, right? So since it's a null, that means we can't continue this subtree anymore, right? So that means whatever value, so we're, we're done with this first null. Now, whatever value comes next here is going to be the value in the right subtree of this two node. It happens to also be null, but maybe if it wasn't a null, maybe it could have been a three, right? That's when we would put three over here, but clearly it's not, it's a null, so that means Means we can actually stop this subtree as well. So since both of the children were null, that means we're actually done creating this entire subtree. We reached our base case basically. So we're done with this. Now the next value that comes in our string is clearly going to be the right child of one. So the three is gonna be the right child here and now, of course, pre-order traversal, we're gonna fill in the left subtree of three. So what's the next value in our string? It's a four, so this does have a left subtree, four. Continuously, we're gonna be doing the left subtree of four. We see it's a null, that's our base case, so we're done with the left subtree of four. Next, we're looking for the right subtree of four. So what's the next value in our string? It's again, null. So we reached the base case. We can be done with this entire subtree. So we're gonna pop back up recursively over here to three, and now we know we need to fill in the right subtree. It could be null or it could be a real value. Let's find out. Well, the next value in our string is a five, so therefore, this is going to be five. So next we see that, okay, left child of five is gonna be null and right child of five is gonna be null, right? So clearly what you can see here is that for every single leaf node we have in our tree, we, we specified what their children were gonna be. We specified the leaf node two has two null children, leaf node four has two nulls, and leaf node five has two nulls. That's how you know we're done with the entire string. We're, we're gonna stop here. We know that there's nothing left to do, right? Every single leaf had null children. Therefore, we can't possibly continue this tree, right? So we're done. So that's why it's not ambiguous. And by the way, what do you think the time complexity of this was? Well, we know that pre-order traversal is pretty linear, right? So basically O of N for serializing and for deserializing. This problem is actually a little simpler than you might think, for a hard problem at least. So now with that being said, let's jump into the code. So good thing for us, we only have to fill in two functions. So let's start out with the serialize. So we're gonna be given a root node for a tree and we wanna convert it into a string and then return that string. So let's start with a empty string initially, right? And actually just to make things a little bit easier, I'm gonna set our result to an array. I'm basically gonna be adding strings together. Like for example, if we had a node one, I'm gonna add it like this. If we had a node two, I'm gonna add it like this. And then at the end, I'm basically gonna be joining all the strings together with a comma delimiter. So I'm gonna define a function inside a function just because it's easier once again, right? So this is gonna be our pre-order depth for search. We are gonna be passing in the current root or the current node that we're visiting. And of course we know that the base case is if the node is null. And in that case, what are we gonna do? Our special character that we're gonna define is gonna basically be a n character. So to result, I'm gonna append and n character, and then we're gonna return. If it's not null, then we know we can append. We can, we're, since we're doing pre-order, we're gonna be appending before we recursively do depth for search. We're gonna append node.val, but we know it's gonna be an integer, so we're gonna, we're gonna convert it into a string. So node.val converted into a string, appended to result. After that, of course, we just call our recursive depth for search on the left and right subtree. So uh, depth for search on node.left and depth for search on node.right. 
And we don't even have to call our return function because once this is done executing, it's gonna basically return by default. So once that is done, we know that our result is gonna contain all the strings uh, that we want it to. So basically what I'm gonna do is return the result joined by a comma delimiter. So comma dot join everything in result. Oh, but I almost forgot we actually have to remember to call our debt for search function. So I'm gonna call it passing in the root value. So our serialize function is actually just as simple as that. So next we're gonna be moving on to our deserialize function. So we're gonna be given the data, right? We know that the data is going to be comma delimited. So we're basically gonna split it based on that comma into an array, a list of the data that we're gonna be needing. So I'm just gonna call that vals. And I'm also gonna create a pointer. I'm gonna call it self.i, self, because it's gonna be a member variable of this class, basically because we want it to be global because I'm about to define another recursive function inside of this function, and I don't even need to pass any variables into it because this self.i is global. So I'm gonna initialize this to zero, indicating we're gonna start at the first value in our list of values. And so once again, we're gonna start with the base case. Now, what's the base case gonna be? Well, if our pointer is pointing at a value in the vowels, and if that value happens to be null, now how do we know if it's null? Well, that's pretty easy, right? We can say vowels at index self dot i, and if it happens to be equal to the character n, we know that's null, so what are we gonna do? We're just gonna return the base case. We're gonna return a null node. If it's not null, that means we have some work to do, right? We have to create a tree node with that particular value. But we know this vals at self.i, we know this is going to be a string, right? So, and we know that tree nodes have integer values, so we're gonna convert this into an integer before we pass it in. And so this node is going to be referred to as node, one thing I actually almost forgot, if we're create, if we're saying that the value at this vals is null, so we're basically saying we're done visiting this, right? We're, we're returning null for this n in our values array. So before we return, we wanna make sure that we increment i. So self.i plus one, so that next time we go, we call a function that we're at the appropriate value in our list of values. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing down here too, right? So since we're already using the value at self.i, once we create this tree node, we know we have to increment our pointer i so that we can be moving on to the next value that we need to create a node for. So I'm gonna call depth for search. Remember, we don't actually have to pass any parameters into this, and the return value for this is going to be the subtree I created for node.left. It could be null or it could be something else. Now, after calling the step first search function, we don't have to increment self.i because that's gonna be happening recursively. So once this is done, we're gonna do the exact same thing for the right subtree. So uh, node.write is also gonna be basically whatever depth first search returns for us. And once all of that is done, we know that we can simply return the node, the root node that we ended up creating. And then once that's done, we've basically defined our depth first search function. So what are we gonna do? We're just gonna call that depth first search function and return the result because for this function, we're taking in a string of data and then converting it into a tree and then returning that tree. This problem is not too bad if you do have a pretty good understanding of depth for search or pre-order traversal or you know just general binary tree traversals. Uh, you could do this with breadth first search if you really wanted to, it just takes a little bit more code, but you can see that this is a pretty efficient enough solution. This is about as good as it gets. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.